Basically, it didn't fit and got stuck multiple times, but I eventually came to a valid conclusion for the excess friction occurring. So I actually have to put the bearings on after I put the whole thing on for it to actually work, or else it's not going to go on. And it looks like now I have to change these flathead screws to some countersink ones as well. For some reason, my countersink bit seems to be anti-lubricant. The moment I added some cutting fluid to it, the cutter stopped cutting. Using the countersink bit was also really slow, so I used a larger drill bit to ream it out a little first. Then I swapped back to the countersink bit to finish it off. Alright, time to try it out again. It's this time I can just put it on top. Didn't seem to have any interference inside and it rolls really smoothly for something this heavy. So now I can put in the adjustment nuts. And the best way to mount them is of course to tilt it around. Oh my god, this is heavy. Holy crap, I probably should mount this onto the table saw right now so that I don't need to lift this up. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> but now the glue has fully cured, so I'll just trim it on the bandsaw and mount it on. Oh yes, almost forgot to kind of sink the head of the bolt, or else I won't be able to fit the box in again. And now I'll use my level to check whether they're on the same plane. Not necessarily whether they're actually level or not, but just needs to be on the same plane. That's about it. Really solid. Push it on that. Nice. Uh, but I don't want to take my legs off the floor. So I would like the center of my blade to pass through the entire sliding table as it reaches the end. And this is roughly the thickness of the end caps. So I'll have to move it back a little bit. Right that here. Yeah, I'm actually it looks good. While the sliding table was off, I am reinforcing the bolts on the vertical adjustment mechanism since they were just epoxied in. Start adding the adjustment nuts in. Put the bearing in its lowest position so that it doesn't prevent me from moving the top of the sliding table. So finally I've got all the bearings adjusted to the correct height. It did take a while, I even had to take off some of the metal plates and then re-screw the holes but we got there eventually. Um, what I did was actually just turn the nuts until I could feel a little bit of resistance on the bearing and then I stopped right there. And that's basically how I set it up. The last piece of the puzzle to the build, wow, can't believe I actually said that, is the last piece. <laughs> Damn. The last piece of the puzzle is the top and I'm going to use this piece of MDF, another MDF, and I actually want it to look pretty so I'm going to put some veneers on the edges. By the way, this is my first time doing veneers outside of school, so hopefully all goes well. Yep, can't remember this step either. Now with the veneer sign against the fence, I can trim it to be a little under the actual width. 
and I can do the other side, this time a bit more refined. You know, I thought this day would never come, but right now we have a sliding table right beside my table saw. <sighs> never thought this would actually happen because I never had time to do it. But thank God for the summer holidays. But it is still far from finished, so I am now dressing it up a little by making some solid wood end caps to cover the MDF, which would also help to protect the MDF from damage. The plastic handle on the side of the table saw was really starting to get on my nerves. Now we have finally got the motor truck on hand, it kind of got misplaced during delivery but in the meantime I have noticed some pretty big issues on the sliding table. So if you pay attention to the gap you will notice some pretty big sidewood play as I push on the side of the sliding table. Now I really hope that that doesn't actually affect the accuracy too much because I currently had enough drama with uh, another project while waiting for this motor track to arrive. So I'll move on for now and try to fix it during the final assembly where I'll check whether everything is as planned. Uh, I truly don't get this anymore, I must be so distracted because I kind of cut it on the wrong side. Yep. It's supposed to be on the other side, not the back side. Well, the only way to fix it without starting over is to glue a piece of wood back into the cut. Then after trimming it flush with the surface, I can remake the cut. But there was still the solid wood end caps in the way, so I used some hand tools to knock out a channel there as well. Later on, I even took the end caps off so that I can properly use my chisels on them. I'm not actually going to round the slot for the motor track on top because I would like to do that after I have made all the adjustments so that when I route, route it out, it's final. I haven't put in the screws for the motor track on the side yet as well because I want those holes to be final as well. So that means it is pretty much finished. So now I can take it apart and put on a coat of varnish. For the finish, I'm using the same floor varnish that I had tested when making the wooden lamp, which I have found to be very durable and smooth, and it doesn't stick like the other furniture varnishes. Whoops, almost forgot to burn in my logo. Most of the parts are veneer and MDF, so I only have to seal the exposed edges. Well, it's been a few days later, and as you can see, I've even taken the effort to repaint my whole table saw cabinet. 
and also readjust order extension fence and extension table. Now the fence glides so smoothly. Somehow it even feels strange that it glides so smoothly. Now back to the main topic. We are finally going to start assembling the sliding table. While I'm assembling it, I'm adding some reinforcement to the frame to eliminate some of the play we saw earlier, like putting additional screws, additional nuts, and adding some legs. Then I can really take my time to dial everything in, making sure that the rails are flat with no twists and parallel to each other. Now the top, which is a lot harder, as it doesn't have a built-in adjustment system, so I had to do everything with shims. <laughs> After mounting the top slide on, I'm using the dial indicator to check that the top piece of MDF lines up with its direction of motion, and also checking the face as well to ensure it is somewhat flat and also parallel with the sliding table's motion of travel. Next is a long weighted minor track. Now I can screw around with both the vertical and horizontal adjustment mechanism until it is in line with my table saw. After a few hours of adjusting it, I think I'm at a point where I'm reasonably happy with uh, all the adjustments I've made in that the sliding table is just high enough so that it carries the level with it and also that all, everything, all the rails are flat and parallel uh, even the tabletop has been readjusted so that it aligns perfectly with the direction which it travels so now I can move on to the very last operation to this project so I actually mounted my router onto another piece of board and then had some T-nuts to go through that piece of board into the minor track of my table saw and that way, I'll just need to have the router bit line up with the mark inside there and then just slide the sliding table across, make the first cut then just move the router to the next position and route it out again like that and that should ensure that my motor track is perfectly in line with the movement of the sliding table Perfect. This is one of the moments when something actually works. One last thing to do and that is to adjust it so that it's parallel with the uh, minor track on my table saw. Um, honestly, I think that is as good as I'll get with my table saw because I think my minor track might even be bent or have a little bit more wear in the middle. About 0.2 of a millimeter. Yeah, you see that? jumps back but the end and the start both land on point one so should be good enough hopefully after almost two months of hard work it is finally done now I finally have time to do my extended essay before moving on let's actually make a test cut to see what it even works as I don't have a cross cut jig for the sliding table yet, I'm just using my square as a fence. I mean the cut is straight, it's clean, I don't have any burn marks as usual, but it's not square despite using my square to do it. So it might indicate that my blade isn't actually aligned with my minor track at all, which I won't be surprised, not a bit. However, I would leave that to another video as that would probably involve a full checkup on my table saw and I'll probably do it when I build a cross cut fence for it. Right now, I'm just glad it's done and I'm sure it will prove to be a very valuable asset to my workshop. There are still a few downsides to it. One is it takes up a lot more space than a regular cross cut sled and it will take me some getting used to having this constantly in my way when I make rib cuts. Also the play that we noticed earlier, it's still there, but it's not as big as it used to be. The remaining play in the sliding table might actually just be us meeting the physical limitations of wood. Um, yeah, because there is a lot of places where it can flex because wood is 
only that strong. There is still one last thing I want to do with it before we roll the credits. I have a dream that one day I'll sit on my sliding table. I mean, we did build this like a tank, right? Ah, this could actually just break it and then it'll be just a sad ending. Oh crap. Yeah, I actually can handle my weight easily. But I don't actually want to slide out because I'm sure it will 100% break if I slide out. But yeah, easily. Jesus Christ. No thought I was dead this light on bearings, man. Ugh. Oh god, why do I even do this to myself? God damn it! Ugh. Hello? What's wrong? <laughs>